every family has secrets. The kind of stuff that is gossiped about at parties, but is never confronted directly. Someone might have a little bit too much to drink and let slip something they shouldn't. And parents lie to their kids all the time. But usually, they lie about what happened to the family goldfish who took a tragic trip down the toilet. A harmless lie, right? At some point growing up, we realize our parents are humans, like everyone else, and all humans are flawed. But what happens when the family gossip and lies are seriously twisted? What if they even involve murder and mutilation? What if you discover one of your parents is a serial killer? How do you come to terms with something like that? I really hope you're ready for this one. We have a very special episode for you today. If you don't know about the Black Dahlia and the Zodiac yet, it's time to catch those videos. It's all important today. Grab your popcorn, or don't, if you got a weak stomach, and let's take a look at today's mystery. The man in question is George Hodel. The thing is, it's really in question. Hodel died in 1999 and he left behind more mysteries than answers. But if it's possible to unravel the puzzle of his life, it might unlock some of history's most infamous unsolved murders. Let's turn back the clock to October 10th, 1907. George Hodel is born the only child of Esther and George Hodel Sr. in Los Angeles, California. He's super smart, he's got a high IQ, and the musical talent of a child prodigy. He graduates high school at age 15 and starts at the California Institute of Technology in 1923. His parents have every reason to think he's got a bright future ahead of him. But Odell drops out of college after just one year. He's caught up in a scandal involving him and one of the professor's wives. She became pregnant with Odell's child and Odell wanted to raise the baby with her, but the professor's wife refused. Her marriage fell apart shortly after. Five years down the line, Hodel has long moved on from the professor's wife. His new common-law wife is Amelia, and they have a son named Duncan. He quickly moves on from his wife too, and in the 1930s, he's legally married to Dorothy Anthony. She's a model from San Francisco, and they have a daughter together they named Tamar. In 1932, Hodel graduates from the pre-med program at Berkeley and goes on to get his medical degree from the University of California, San Francisco. His choice of profession is one of the most important details about Hodel's profile. It's also the thing that makes him the most lethal. In the 1940s, Hodel moves to LA to live a life of luxury and marries his second legal wife, Dorothy Harvey. In 1945, he buys the now infamous Soudan House. Living in the house is George, both his legal wives, the two Dorothys, and his original common-law wife, Emilia. Then there are Tamar and three of his other children. One of these is Stephen Hodel, who is very important to this story. More on that shortly, but first, it's important to note, Hodel is always throwing wild parties described as drug-fueled orgies by witnesses. As well as the three wives he's already got, he has a string of different lovers. One of these women is none other than Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia. Hodel's professional life is as busy as his personal life. He runs three different clinics during these years, including one called the First Street Clinic. To keep his life in order, he employs a young woman called Ruth Spaulding to be his secretary. She works for him for a few years, but on May 9th, 1945, she dies of an overdose of barbiturates. The overdose seems suspicious though, and the LAPD starts an investigation. George Hodel is on the list of suspects, and the LAPD discovers he and Ruth were having an affair before her death. Angry and rejected, Ruth wrote a detailed account of George Hodel's crimes, like financial fraud, illegal abortions, and bribery, and she planned to hand it into the police. That's when Hodel killed her, allegedly. There isn't enough evidence to convict Hodel, and the case against him is thrown out. 
Hodel leaves his bad reputation behind in the States and moves to China to briefly work for the United Nations. Then, in January 1947, the body of Hodel's former girlfriend, Elizabeth Short, is found dismembered and mutilated in an empty lot in LA. The body was separated using a technique called a hemocorporectomy. The body is sliced beneath the lumbar spine. This is the only place it can be severed without breaking a bone. This medical practice was taught in the 1930s while George was attending medical school. Hodel is on the list of suspects, but so are 150 other people. The case goes cold. Now, let's fast forward a couple years to October 1949. Hodel's 14-year-old daughter, Tamar, accuses George of molesting her, and he's charged with the crime. Horrifyingly, three different witnesses testify in court that they had seen Hodel assaulting his daughter. But despite all the eyewitness accounts, Hodel is acquitted of the charges just a few months later, in December 1949. Tamar does not get any justice, but the trial does make a big impact elsewhere. George Hodel is now on the LAPD's radar as a potentially violent criminal, and he's got a medical background. When the LAPD takes a closer look, George Hodel fits the profile of the Black Dahlia's murderer. Suddenly, he's at the top of the suspect list again. On February 19, 1950, the LAPD bugs Hodel's house with two microphones to see if he mentions anything about the Black Dahlia murder. There isn't much to hear other than George Hodel being an everyday jerk. That is, until February 19, 1950. Three haunting snippets of audio are captured. 8.25 p.m. Woman screamed! Woman screamed! Again! It should be noted, the woman was not heard before the scream. Then later, Hodel says, Realize there was nothing I could do. Put a pillow over her head and cover her with a blanket. Get a taxi. Expired. 12.59. And then, he said, Supposing I did kill the Black Dahlia. They couldn't prove it now. They can't talk to my secretary anymore because she's dead. They thought there was something fishy. Anyway, now they may have figured it out. Killed her. Maybe I did kill my secretary. Hodel references the Black Dahlia and the death of his former secretary, Ruth Spaulding. In other conversations, he reveals even more of his own crimes. Overall, he implicates himself in a big way. It's apparent he had many motives for keeping Ruth Spaulding quiet. Hodel took advantage of desperate women by offering illegal abortions. These procedures could leave women injured and traumatized. Back alley doctors such as Hodel relied on the social stigma against abortions to manipulate women and abuse them. They knew that fear of backlash would stop the women from going to the police. It is thought that Elizabeth Short could have been one of his victims. In March 1950, Hodel leaves the U.S. and moves to Hawaii, which was still a U.S. territory at the time. In April, just one month too late, the LAPD has enough evidence to charge Hodel with Elizabeth Short's murder, but he's long gone. On February 20th, 1951, Lieutenant Frank Jemison of the LA District Attorney's Office submits a report to the grand jury. In the report, Lillian Denorick, a woman who lived with George Hodel for a while, identifies Elizabeth Short as being one of Hodel's former girlfriends. Denorick also reveals that Hodel enjoyed spending time around the Biltmore Hotel, the last place Elizabeth Short was seen before her disappearance. There are four other suspects mentioned in the report to the grand jury, but with the investigation still ongoing, no one is charged. Meanwhile, in Hawaii, Hodel gets a degree in psychiatry and works as a counselor in a prison for a few years. Then he moves to the Philippines and remarries. They have four children together, but end up getting divorced in the 60s. Eventually, Hodel moves back to the States in 1990 and gets married again, this time to a woman called June. He stays out of the limelight for the final years of his life, before dying at 91 years old in 1999. No charges were ever brought against him for the murders. Hold your horses now, that's not where our story ends, not by a long shot. Just a short while after hearing about his father's passing, Steve Hodel visits his father's home to sort through his things. Steve 
didn't have the best relationship with George as he'd abandoned the family when Steve was just nine years old. Even after decades of estrangement, Steve couldn't have predicted that he would discover about his father. Among George Hodel's possessions, Steve finds a collection of photographs. One photograph shows a woman who looks exactly like the Black Dahlia. There were also family portraits that had been taken by Man Ray, a surrealist artist and former friend of George Hodel. Two of Man Ray's works, Minotaur and The Lovers, bear disturbing resemblance to the Black Dahlia crime scene photographs. These images trigger something in Steve's mind, an unquenchable thirst for the truth. It's just the beginning of Steve's collection of evidence against his father. He joins the LAPD and rises through the ranks. He uses his police knowledge to work through the puzzle of George Hodel. His suspicions are confirmed when he is given access to the original Black Dahlia police file and discovers George Hodel, his father, was the prime suspect. But it isn't just the Black Dahlia case that Steve fears his father might have been involved with. Take another look at George Hodel. Does he remind you of anyone? And it's not just their physical appearance that's similar. Steve Hodel also realizes that his father's handwriting is scarily similar to the handwriting of the Black Dahlia Avenger. The Avenger wrote to LA newspapers around the time of Short's murder, claiming to be the killer. This handwriting sample has since been compared to letters of another letter-inclined killer, the Zodiac. The Zodiac killer loved tormenting cops and journalists during his killing spree. What do you make of this? One expert witness for the Zodiac investigation agreed that the George Hodel and Zodiac handwriting samples were written by one and the same person. What do you think? Did the twisted soul write these messages? The same twisted soul? Was George Hodel really the Zodiac and the murderer of the Black Dahlia? Or Steve Hodel grasping at straws? Let's hear your thoughts on this one. All the evidence can make your head spin. The haunting truth is that even if Hodel wasn't the Zodiac or the Black Dahlia murderer, it's still possible that he's destroyed the lives of many many women over the decades. None of his victims will receive justice, and who knows, he really could be the answer to true crime's most famous mystery. And that's the story of George Hodel. How's that for a family secret? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video and want to be first in line for new videos, please subscribe to the channel so you never miss out. Also, please smash that like button and don't forget to share with your friends. It goes a long way to helping the channel grow and it doesn't cost you anything. I'll see you real soon for the next one. Thanks for watching.